Today I'm going to be making what is probably my weirdest Heathkit video uh, of all time. This is the Heathkit Fish Spotter. Uh, this is a, a fish radar, a dual range fish radar, probably from the 60s or early 70s. I don't know how long they ran for. Um, I picked this one up in basically mint condition. I got this for Chris. Uh, Chris has been in previous videos as a Christmas gift. And this one, I'm going to do a, a unboxing here, is complete even with the original manual, which I will go through. In looking all the way in the back cover, we see that this was made by the Heath Company. This was pre-assembled from the factory, and I have previously fired it up. This does work, right? And what we have is there's actually a motor that spins around in here, and there's a, a light that displays and, and tells you basically from this indication where fish are and depth and what have you. This, this is all in the book. We're going to go over this during testing. This unit does use... Uh, two six volt lantern batteries. I, I don't have this. I'm gonna be hooking up a 12 volt power supply directly into the unit for testing today. Not only because it's all I got, but it allows for extended testing without worrying about batteries dying. Uh, Chris will have to get like rechargeable 12 volt batteries. He may just try it as a novelty. This is not something he would take out on a boat every single day, if at all. Going through, we can see this is in, in immaculate condition, probably never used. Everything is just like absolutely brand new. Just a couple of scuffs on the outside of the case. I mean, this thing is in perfect cosmetic condition. The label on the back of the unit uh, refers to this as a MI-2901. This is the actual model of the unit. This uh, book was available for 50 cents back in the day, right? So the 2901 was this uh, full featured one we see right here up top with the sound alert and everything. And I guess the other one was just the depth sounder, right? So there's a whole bunch of... Uh, controls and setups and what have you, alarm sensitivities, uh, two scales, right, that would be used. One for 0 to 60 and the other one is for 0 to 240. We're going to be testing this out in, in my swimming pool to see what we get out of this thing. We'll be using the 0 to 60 scale, obviously, for that. And discussion of how to use this device and, and set it up and set up the alarm and whatnot. Indications that we may might see from this unit. The book further talks about what you would see for various depths, getting depth ranges, the sending pattern, the shape of the sending pattern, and then a diary, if you keep a fish diary. Great, so let's get a power supply connected. Let's bring this outside over to the swimming pool and we're gonna uh, set it up in accordance with the book and test it out, see how it works. There's a compartment for the uh, 12 volt batteries, six, two six volt lantern batteries. They sell them on Amazon, uh, rechargeable ones. If you wanted to use them, I wouldn't recommend getting the non-rechargeable. They probably won't last long. You see the size of the motor mm -hmm. here? Let me move, bring it forward a little bit. See the size of the motor here that spins, sends a signal out. Pulse. Where? Where does it send? Uh, Where's the antenna? Where's I, I'll show you. I'll show you. It connects right to here. It's laying on the floor. I don't have it in frame. Yeah, it's it. There's a, a bunch of settings here that's, that's it's, uh, rather complicated to uh, set up. I don't have the uh, manual, the actual builder's manual. This one came pre-built. As we see from the sticker down here, there's a serial number. So this is made by Heath. Not, it's not a Heath kit, so to speak. It's pre-assembled as consumer-grade appliance. But uh, yeah, it's just sonar, as it were. Let's get this thing fired up. I'm going to do a couple things to, to get this thing to uh, work in the camera. I may have to get the camera closer. So I'm just going to turn the knob here. i got to bring it really close in order for the uh, camera to see the light. We're on the, we're on the inner scale, right? This is the, the 60 range. Just to show you, if I turn to 240, you'll hear it slow down. That's the 240 range, and it doesn't come in very well on the camera with the flickering, but that's okay, we're not using it. I just wanted to demonstrate that's the outer range of 240. I'm gonna go back to 60. back on the inner scale now. I'm not going to be using the alarm, the sound alert. I'm not really familiar with it, but I know I'm going to adjust the sensitivity. And I'm just going to bring it back right to there. And uh, 
we're, we're using a swimming pool. Obviously, it's not ideal. It's not a lake by any means. But we're just going to try and uh, use it in, the, in, in a fish spotter mode to see if we could get some depth readings, use it across the swimming pool to see if we could just take some measurements till it hits the wall of the swimming pool and comes back. That way we could get some deeper readings. Uh, Elvis will assist me in doing that as we uh, try and take some measurements both down and to the side. We ran into problems with this power supply. It, it was unbelievable. Uh, if we turn the sensitivity up that everything goes off the charts, the current kicks up so high and it produces so much noise, and, and we believe we come up with a theory to isolate the problem. The, the negative uh, is connected to ground over a capacitor, and so much noise crosses from negative to ground that it, it trips the GFCI for this outlet. And while I can't say with certainty, 100% certainty, that's the cause of this, right? Because I haven't dug too deep into this power supply yet, I can tell you that if I turn up sensitivity really high, the entire circuit dies and I have to go and reset the GFCI for this outlet. I thought that was very strange and I will tell you that right before that happens the current goes up to about 1 amp. So look at that, this thing pulling about 12 watts right before this dies, right? So I definitely want to keep sensitivity low on this and, and I think it's a fault of the power supply and the amount of noise that this thing generates when you crank up that sensitivity. I'll crank it up a little just so you can see what it looks like. And you can see that, that it jumped up to 0 0.2 and that would, that would increase uh, exponentially as I touch it see it's at 0 0.5 I don't want to go any higher than that because it will it will trip the, the uh, GFCI again so I'm going to lower this now back down to an acceptable level I, th I think we're good right there we're going to get started with some tests I'm trying to balance the sensitivity with the actual test we're doing he's moving this thing in, in the position in, in the pool right now he's got his finger in front of it a little deeper though because there's there's a uh, it has to pitch down a little bit because there is an angle. Right there, we're looking at... I bring up sensitivity just a hair. Yeah, there we go. We can see it right there. We're looking at about 30 feet. It's scanning across the, the end of the pool. It's about a 30-foot pool, and we can see that it kicked up. Right now, he's against the wall, a 7-foot distance we're looking at from, from, the, from edge to edge. And right now, it's pointing straight to the bottom of the first step. It's just a couple of feet down, and we can see... Uh, a couple feet down is picked up. He's back at the edge of the wall now, and we can see he's, he's scanning around the pools what he's doing. He's moving the thing across the pool, but as he's moving it to different areas, you can see uh, some reoccurring numbers. We're going to see that, that 30 foot when he goes to the around the 30 feet, he goes to the edge of the pool right there. Right? There's the 30 foot as he's at the edge of the pool on the opposite side, and now he's pointing it basically right next to him at the wall, now he's pointing it down at the stairs, right over here. But this is working uh, very nice, actually. This, is, this does a really good job at uh, measuring the distance uh, with uh, a high degree of sensitivity. I'm, I'm quite impressed, actually. We managed to stick it into a, a metal pole to hold it in position. And we can see now it's, it's being held in place right there, straight across the pool. It's not ideal because it's also reflecting off that metal pole now, but we could see another shot straight across. Now I could I, I could play with the sensitivity here. Yeah, and raising the sensitivity doesn't do any good because now you can't tell what you're really looking at, but as I drop that sensitivity, I'm gonna see what happens. Yep, yeah, and that'll be the, the first one to come up. Again, this is not set up in the most ideal of conditions in, in a swimming pool held by a metal pole. And we also run into a problem with the swimming pool of it bouncing back and forth and around and, and bouncing back into the unit. So we have to keep the sensitivity extremely low for this, right? Because the bounces through the water against the walls and what have you. There's also an alarm here that you could go and set. It's engaging. And I guess there's value in that if you fish, but there's the alarm activated. I'm going to shut that off now. So I hope you found this quick video on the dual range fish spotter enjoyable, entertaining, or whatever. It's kind of a, a weird device, but I thought I'd share it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?